guys, Ralph here. Second set of models for this one, for the um, Eagle Moss Star Trek Starship Collection. Done the first 10, this is for 11 to number 20. Models only, not doing the, um, don't want to do the magazines if you want to read them, fine off you go, but these are why I bought the Eagle Moss sets. So I could um, have the models. So, start off with number 11. This one is another one that they used to use this model. Well, not this exact model, obviously. For loads of things to use it for. This is obviously the original Reliant. And the... Um, it was used for the Saratoga. It was used for the... Oh, the one on Deep Space Nine at the beginning. Yeah, it'll come to me eventually, but... Yeah, this was Khan's stolen ship. Captain Terrell's ship. Doing Star Trek Two, the original Star Trek Two. But, again, quite a good model. Metal on the outer. Metal on the top. There's, if you can barely see... And let's have a look if I can get in closer. Rolling like crazy. There's a there's an Aztec. You can just step make it out there. I think on the front. Looks like a weapons pod on the top or a sensor pod. I don't know what shoot one. Actually, there's torpedo launches there anyway. So yeah, it's a weapons pod forward and aft. Two shuttle bays. Engines again made out of clear plastic. These inner parts so you could reflect light through, and they would pretend like they're glowing. But remember the the outer bits were. Um, with me doing the models as well. The outer bits were black and the inner bits were blue, so they'd blow on the inside of the ship but it flies off to warp. So, a little bit. You can't always do precise what the models are when you're doing stuff like that. But for the price, you're left with a little bit of a... of a... yeah. little bit of a compromise I suppose. Right, number 12. This is, is this the, um, actually it doesn't say, I'll have to use a bit of reference on this one. This is the Akira class USS Thunderchild. Now why wouldn't they put the name of the Thunderchild on here? A little bit of a bit there. It's like when they, when they took out the sprues, they're not doing very well on this one. Again, this part of metal is less detail. Lines underneath there. Poor attempt of a delta shield either side of the deflector dish. Clear deflector dish looks like it's about to fall off. But why won't they put Thunderchild on this? Is United Federation appliance there? Yeah. We definitely use a Thunderchild. I think this was used in one of the um, Borg battles during the um, Star Trek First Contact. Very much reminiscent, reminiscent of, um, if you did that way around, the, um, how was it that way around? Yeah, it was that way around. No, it wasn't. Yes. Of the NX-01 class Enterprise Captain Archers, but then flipped round, very, very similar to it, and then just like stuck on some sort of hole on the bottom. But... Right, we're back on to... Aliens! Now, tell me what that is. Nope. Well, that's the Jim Hadar Battlecruiser. Lovely purple that it's on there. Nothing out of the ordinary. It looks like there's a massive torpedo chucked underneath it. But different handles for Deep Space Nine. So many different. It's like there's a dozen ships you could get off this to cling on. Bird of Prey. You've got. Some sort of like weapon on the front. It looks like like you use it like as a gun. Added on so many extras. I mean, it's, it's alien, but there's looks like there's so many parts of different ideas that came up with this one for the Gemadar. Also, we've got the bug one as well, which I think is coming later on. But yeah, it's an excellent ship. There's so many different. Not much on detail. A little bit changing on the colours. Maybe slight purpley. Silk metallic there, and then a, a silver metallic. Let's give it a little bit of depth. Yeah. 
with 13, 14, I was like we're still on with the um, Deep Space 9. And this one, Cardassian, Cardassian, yes, I said Cardassian. I'm saying Galore class. Yes, the Galore class starship. The Cardassian order, is it? I think. Yeah, they've got some obviously alien Cardassian writing on the side of here next to the badge. Looks a little bit, I don't know. The bridge section there, either side, looks a bit. I don't know. So they've been scratched off, or it's meant to be like that. I don't know. I just don't know. Fins on the back. I think that was used to be a weapon, wasn't it? I've never seen it possibly being shot. It's a big blooming weapon, though. They always looked a bit iffy, these, like they were, I don't know, wrong way around, possibly. I mean, went that way, then the wings are wrong, but again, different alien design. Why not? Really, why not? Let's fall down of this set. Number five coming up now. Now, this is probably one of my favourites. This is the Equinox. Now, it looks like a Voyager. But an older version of a Voyager class, but it's not. It's the um, USS Equinox NCC72381. At least I've got the name on this one. A really stumpy little little ship. Really excellent design for this one. And the deflector looks better than the Voyager. That is definite. It's almost like you go on these Edel Moss stuff. You look at them and you think, yeah, really good this, but it's like there are two or three, maybe four different places that make them. So you have different levels of quality per place as you go. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong. Gap on there, but that doesn't matter what these are. The engines, actually, I'm looking at the engines. The, the blue parts, the warp set engines. The certain angles I'm getting, there's little bits of light coming through. And actually, that's pretty good. There's something inside there. So they've actually done that one really well. So, and then the red bits, the um, bus out collectors are just painted on. But again, plastic, metal. But I really, I do like that ship, the Equinox. We have, if anybody remembers your next generation, the Ferengi Marauder. Correct me if I'm wrong. It looks dusty this for some reason, but it's not. I uh, never knew where the bridge was on this. There's a little bit that juts out there. These were weapons they use. Has this cut this clear parts on this as well. Where the engines are, but they're in um, yellowy orange. That one's not lined up at all. There's a big gap on that. Yeah, again plastic. Oh. Parts underneath cleared. So you can possibly get a light through that. The right angle. I think no. No. So yeah. It was with the um I think it was one the first one of the first few um episodes of Next Generation. It wasn't the one with the Stargazer, it was the Oh yeah. Last Outpost, Next Generation episode. But it really does look weird. Under my light, it looks dusty. I'm trying to clean it, but it's not. It's all been sealed in, so... Yeah, at least we're onto an alien one now. Which I'll regret, eventually, I'm sure. Because I much prefer my Federation ships, which this isn't. This... is the USS Dauntless. NX-01A, before they had an NX-01. Now, this must have been a massive ship. With a quantum slipstream driving this thing. I mean, all completely different. Badged up Federation, but it was part of a, a plot by an alien who wanted to um, take the Voyager and destroy the Borg, where he got eventually um, caught by the Borg, got Borg and assimilated. So, ha! To you! Not oh, really different, completely different. Your warp drive there, and then you, and it's your slipstream drive through the front. All made out and clear, but parts again. 
Well, do I do like this? The, the, the Voyager did come out with the the wedge shape sort of parts instead of having a circular dish, and then next generation an oval shaped dish, and then we went balmy. I don't know if that's a yotto or watto, but there are some Aztec patterns on here, but they're way too big for the size of the ship. This ship was massive, but no real defined anything on this. No bridge at the top, completely flat. Impulse vents, engines at the back there. Nice ship. Very nice ship, but I think ultimately looking at it as much as I am doing, a bit disappointing. And then X01 really shouldn't have been there, but Enterprise was after the um, the Voyager episodes. So, again, tough. Right, this is where Eagle Moss start getting a bit silly. Shall we see? Now this is the Bajoran Solar Sailor. And if I get this in one piece, oh, it's taped in. Yes, in one, two sides. So you not only see an unboxing, you're actually seeing fresh mint out of the packages. So anyway, buying these in the future is thinking, oh, it's from Retro Trek Ralph. Or Retro Trek Ralph, should I say. Knows these aren't mint. Now, it looks like this could fall to pieces so easily. It's ridiculous. Get rid of that. I mean, the, the main cabin part is... Wasn't it there? So it actually went that way forward. I'm sure it does. Yeah, so all the sails are in front, and then the engine section of the back. It looks like a, a gem had our bug there. But these bits here look like they would probably break, which they did in the episode. When they, they found the... Um, there was a... wasn't a wormhole on Deep Space Nine. There was some sort of slipstream gateway, well, passage, that made the ship go even faster, and this would actually emphasise it and get pushed along at warp speed without a warp engine. I was trying to do, I think Cisco was trying to do a um, history lesson for Jake, just wanted to bond with him. Well, but a good ship, but it's 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 so delicate. I don't touch this. I mean, the only metal part on this, I think, is that there's a glue dab there. If you can see, they've missed aimed quite badly. But and the plastic itself. I don't know if you can see that there, there's a, yeah. If I'm going to stop rolling, it'd be nice. Now, there are lines on the, the um, I don't know if it's intentional or not. You know, the top part haven't got lines on, the bottom part have. So, right, number 19. And you're not following the Eagle Moss stuff. We are on the Stargazer. This is what was in um, Picard's ready room. Bright yellow. So we wondered why. Stargazer, NCC 2893, was bright yellow, and then we saw the ship over the lounge, do, 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 whatever, and never really um, was, was a different colour. So much thrown onto this, it's ridiculous. It's the only time I actually remember seeing a Constitution refit type of ship in the next generation. I mean, this is, if you look here, is a Constitution class ship. And then they build it on this extra section on here with bigger thrusters. For some reason this feels loose. Yes. But you got a brig section up here, exactly the same as the old Connie. Well, the refit Connie, sorry. Impulse engines either side, there and there, to give you even more power. But underneath, it just seems a bit odd. You've got another bridge section there. With windows and a ready room at the back. Which doesn't look right. But then these lumps. It, it, it's and only one An antenna, I don't know. Is it with an experimental ship? It's a bit weird. I'd say. But... It's a different design. It's the first four-nacelle ship we actually saw out of um, in, in normal. What's this? We said cannon, shall we? Star Trek cannon. But it's definitely different. There's a lot of big size to it. 
I mean, you saw in the episode of the um, Ferengi towing this along, and you can tell the size of the difference. They're obviously not exact to scales, but last one, final one, and we are for the first time on in the teens. Klingon. Is this the um, Klingon attack cruiser? I think it is. The Vulture class attack cruiser, next generation. I think these were brought in. Was it during unification? Not unification. It was redemption or something. The um, season four, five, whatever cliffhanger. Where well, these were for the civil war in, in on the Klingon homeworld of Kronos. Yeah, it's a completely different take of the um, Klingon ship. Still got you comes out the two engines pod on the back, but now pointed. A big massive gun on the front, very much like, is it like the, kind of, similar-ish to the Cardassian, but not exactly, but these were, be f actually were they, because these were in the, was it the, is it the hunted, the wounded, I don't know, one episode that, that came in, of the Phoenix ship that was um, blowing people up and trying to expose the Cardassians, but that's for that one. But yeah, again, you got a very dirty ship. The Klingons love to have a dirty ship. In the models I make, I'd like to make them pristine. And then eventually, when I get older, I might just make them worn and battle damaged and stuff. So at least at the moment, they're all covered in dust. But yeah, really good model. Good details on Klingon insignia. Bridge section up here, top three decks. Yeah. Really excellent. Right, I'll bring them all together and um, show you what, what's what. And here's the um, 11 to 20 Eagle Moss Star Trek Star Ship Collection. I'm going to have to write that down when I get that model up, I'm sure I will. But yeah, some really good models. Different models than just going for the mainstream. We've got, this is always the way it started, doing something different with a, a ship that was in a small scene, the Thunder Child, and then the one where it was in the entire, just an entire episode, recurring. That was in every episode, because it was in the Captain's Ready Room. But, yeah, recurring ship, recurring ship, recurring, recurring, once, but then they reused the model. Well, yeah, these are um, really great models. So, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll get some glue for this. It's like delicate, so delicate. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.